Welcome back everyone to West Explains Best. Today we're doing a CUDA software worksheet tutorial. This is on quadratic equations with square roots. You probably will get one of these from your teacher. These are great worksheets that I give during class or for homework. Um, you know, I like doing traditional style pencil and paper sometimes. So this is something you might see. So we'll go ahead and do a tutorial on it so you guys understand how to do it. Okay. So these are uh, quadratic equations. Quadratic equations are any that are in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. And generally they're set equal to zero. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we are going to try to get the variable squared by itself. We're gonna try to isolate this guy. Okay, in particular we want the x squared all by himself. So how do we do that? Well, let's look at number one. Here we have the k squared, we're trying to get them alone, so we're going to subtract 6 from both sides. We get k squared equals 0. We take the square root. Now this is where we take the square root because we want to undo the square. So if we undo the square, we get k by itself, because the square root of k squared is k, and the square root of 0 is just 0. So this one, we're good to go. That one's pretty simple. Okay, what about something a little bit more tough? Let's go to number 2. This one, we still need to get the v squared by itself. We're going to divide both sides by 25. I know you're thinking you don't like fractions. Well, I mean, it's not as bad as it sounds. We get v squared over 1 equals 1 over 25. We are going to take the square root of both sides now. So we have v equals. Now, this is where you need to be careful. I didn't say it earlier because it was 0. But anytime you take the square root using the square root property, you need to have a plus or minus square root of 1 over 25. Don't just make it positive. There's a plus or a minus. Now, what we can do is we can separate it into two problems. This one, we don't really need to do that because there's no additional stuff being applied to, act, to the variable. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. But here we can just simplify it as the square root of 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 over the square root of 25. That is equal to uh, 1 over 5 plus or minus, and there's our answer, plus or minus 1 over 5. Okay, let's move on to maybe a little bit more challenging one. Let's get down to, I don't know, let's go to number 10. That sounds like a good one. Or, yeah, number 10. Okay, so number 10, we have negative 8 minus 8p squared equals negative 31. First, you want to add reverse order of operations, add 8. We get negative 8p squared equals, what is that, uh, negative 23? Because negative 23 plus 8, yeah, that's right, negative 23. Uh, now we need to divide both sides by negative 8. So we divide both sides by negative 8. And we get p squared equals 23 over 8. Because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. Okay, hold on. Just doing another quick calculation on my calculator. Okay. So then we take the square root of both sides, and we do P equals plus or minus the square root of 23. Sorry, 23 over 8. Now, if, you, if you're asked to rationalize this, you could rationalize it. Uh, for now, I'm just going to say take the decimal. There's another video I have on how to rationalize it. I'll give you a quick demo on this. Uh, so first I'm going to put 23, and then I'm going to simplify square root of 8 into 2 radical 2. The reason why I know is hopefully you guys are getting good at this. I can rewrite this as 2 radical 2. Now if I have... Two radical, if I have a radical in the denominator, you should get it out of the denominator by multiplying radical 2 by radical 2 to both the top and bottom. So I get radical 46 over 2 times radical 2 times radical 2 is going to be 4. And I need the plus or minus. So plus or minus equals that. So there's my answer there. Okay, uh, let's do another one. Hopefully not with thousands. You guys can have fun with those ones. Um... I better do it just, just because. I'll be nice. All right, I'll do number 15 here. First, we're going to subtract 16. Subtract 16. 2151 minus 16. 2135 equals 7p squared. Now I divide that by 7. Divide by 7. I get 305 equals p squared. 
Now I take the square root, take the square root. You need a plus or minus there. Do not forget the plus or minus each time. So now I have the plus or minus square root of 305. Well, I probably should see if I can factor this. So I'm going to try to see if it's divisible by 5 first. It is. It's 5 and 61. 61, that's a weird number. I don't think, I think that might be a prime number. See, 61 divided by 19. I don't think so. Folks, I'm pretty sure this is a prime number. So we're going to leave it as P equals the square root of, we can actually check our answer. And I was right. We can leave it as the square root of 305. And that's pretty much the gist of it. We did kind of the tougher ones. You might have to do some rationalizing the denominator like we did in this one. But otherwise, most of these are pretty similar. Uh, actually, no. I better do one more. I think there's an imaginary number one. Okay, there's that one. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do number five. And that one has an imaginary number in it. Okay, that was a close call. Good thing you guys said something. Okay, so here I have, I need to add 3 to both sides. Add 3. I get 149 negative equals 9r squared. I'm going to divide both sides by 9. 149 divided by 9. Ooh, it's a decimal. We're going to go ahead and leave it like that then. I don't even think 140, 149 is going to be, is that even divisible by 13? Nope. It's not. Okay. So we're going to take the square root. We have r squared equals negative 149 over 9. We're going to take the square root of both sides. What happens when we do that? Well, we get r by itself. That's the whole point. And then we have the square root plus or minus of negative 149 over the square root of 9. We can simplify that. We can simplify that to plus or minus the square root of negative 149 over 3. We can simplify that. Why? Well, because the square root of one, negative 149 can be simplified to square root of negative 1 times the square root of 149. We should know by now that the square root of negative 1 is equal to i. So this becomes i square root of 149. So I'm going to rewrite this as i over 3. Well, I'm going to, I like putting it like this. This is fine. And that's plus or minus, and that's my answer. Okay, hope you guys found this helpful. Good luck with this CUDA software and all your mathematical needs, and I'll see you next time on West Explains Best.